joy to have been here and trust the Lord has <clears throat> uh, worked in your life and that, uh, you know, the Word of God would never returns void. It will accomplish that what you please. Uh, however, uh, you know, it is that which is a savor of life of the life or death of the death. And uh, uh, people, what they do with God's Word is very important. God sees what you do with it. And it can be that which would bring life or it can bring that which would uh, speed your death. So I hope that you will uh, give attention to the Word of God and always, uh, uh, you know, treat it with great respect. And that is that you listen and you apply. You listen and you apply. That's how you treat the Word of God with uh, respect. All right, let's take our Bibles tonight. Open, if you will, to the book of Genesis. That's a pretty easy book to find, uh, you know. And Genesis chapter number 5 uh, in your Bible uh, tonight. And uh, we'll be looking at uh, uh, verse uh, uh, number uh, 21. Uh, verse number 21 uh, in your Bible. We'll start there, chapter 5, uh, verse number 21. And here's what the, the Bible says. Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. All right, let's look the Lord word of prayer, shall we? Father, we just thank you for every opportunity to open the Bible, and we pray you use the Bible in our midst tonight, change our lives uh, through the Word of God, save that soul that may be without Christ, Lord. Uh, we pray that uh, uh, you would also stir our hearts as Christians in these days of uh, desperate uh, need uh, in so many ways, in so many places, and in so many areas. And we'll thank you and praise you for it all. In Jesus' name, for his sake, amen. Now, uh, we've been preaching on uh, in the place of revival. Uh, we desperately need revival. Our, our country uh, is at stake. Our, our freedoms are at stake. Uh, and we desperately are in great need of revival. And the question I have for you, are you in the place of revival? Are you a channel through which revival can come? God needs some people like that. Uh, he can bring revival, but uh, we can limit God in that we're not in the place where he can bring that revival. So are you in the place of revival? Now, uh, to be in the place of revival, there's something that, that all of us need to see. We really need to see. We need to get our eyes open to this. And we need to see that we need to walk closer to God than we've been walking. All right? If we're going to be in the place of revival, we need, all of us need to see that we need to walk with God more than we've been walking with him. Uh, we need to uh, really uh, uh, walk with God and uh, a desire to walk with God more than we've been uh, desiring to walk with him, say. So I want you to uh, notice a man uh, tonight who walked with God. And, um, you know, I like walking. I don't know if you like walking. I like to walk. Boy, I tell you what, I've really slipped up this week. I haven't walked much. I usually try to walk every day, uh, and I've, I've not got to it. And and uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but I like to walk. I, I started walking when I was a kid. Uh, I'd walk to school, walk home from school. And uh, so I enjoy walking. If I can't walk, I'll ride a bike. And I, I've not got the bike out yet, but uh, I like uh, to, to get good exercise. And walking is one of the best you can get. It, you know, walking is a, a tremendous, important exercise. Better riding a bike, better than jogging for sure. Uh, walking, with, uh, walking is really a great uh, uh, form of physical activity in your life. So uh, here we find a man uh, that uh, uh, was uh, walking with God. Now, you know, I, I believe with all my heart as we, as we consider this man, as we think about walking with God, uh, there are three or four relationships uh, that um, uh, you can have with walking. What is your relationship with walking with God tonight? What is your relationship with walking with, walking with God tonight? You know, there are about uh, uh, four relationships. I, I'm going to try to get to them uh, uh, that uh, we can have in this matter of walking with God. First of all, we can have the relationship of not walking with him, not being able to, not being able to. You know, to walk, you got to have life. Amen. You know, you can't walk without life. Um, uh, you know, I worked in a, a, a funeral home when I was going to seminary. 
uh, a friend of mine uh, liked walk, uh, working there because he could study, and, and you know, he could, uh, all he had to do is show uh, where the people to go, and I had to water the flowers at night, and, um, and he could sit there, it was very quiet, he could walk, uh, study, and, uh, but something came up in his uh, home, and, and he had to go back home, and he said, Brother Gary, could you take my job for me? I, I, I really like this job, and, and uh, I, I don't want to lose it, but I got to go home and I, to help him out. I said, okay, I'll do it, but you get back here, because I don't like this job at all, <laughs> you know? I don't like being, right, being around death. I, I don't know what you, I just don't care to be around it. I'm not scared of it, but I just don't like being around it, you know? And uh, so uh, uh, I, I took the job, but you know, the guy never came back. <laughs> and I, I, I quit the job. I really I didn't like it very much. And, uh, but I learned a lot of things uh, working there. I mean, I really did learn a lot of things. And, and one of the things I learned is that dead people can't walk. You know? I never had one of those guys ever get up and say, hey, I want to take a little walk down a, a Broadway here. I'm tired of waiting in this uh, top. I want to take a little walk. You know, I never heard, I uh, never had that happen. I'm glad it didn't. You know, I made an exit where there wasn't one. I've been out of there, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, you know, uh, but uh, dead people can't walk. Why? Because uh, to walk, you got to have life. You see, uh, dear friend, uh, to walk with God, you have to have life. You're, the Bible says we're dead in trespasses and sin. We don't come in this world alive unto God, you know? Adam and Eve sinned the Garden of Eden, and they died. Spiritually, they died. They didn't die physically, but they died spiritually. How do I know that? Well, the highlight of uh, Adam and Eve's day before they died spiritually because of sin, uh, you know, uh, was uh, when they could walk with God in the garden. I mean, that was exciting. That was the top of the day. I mean, that was uh, sumen, uh, uh, sumen bung, whatever that word is. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just the top of the day, you know, and to uh, walk with God. And, uh, but boy, when sin got in their life, they died spiritually. And as a result of that, what did they do when God came in the garden? They hid. They didn't want to walk with God. See? Why? Because they were spiritually dead. Right there, they died spiritually when they sinned against God. And uh, you and I are the offspring of Adam and Eve. And when we came to the world, we didn't come to the world alive. We came to the world dead. See? We didn't want to walk with God. We, well, we wanted to walk with our shelf. We wanted to walk with the world. We wanted to walk with our friends. We didn't want to walk with God. We, we didn't have any desire. We were dead. And I'll tell you something. If you're going to walk with God, you got to get alive. And i got good news for you. You can get alive spiritually. See, Jesus went to the cross. He died for you. He died for me. The Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Say, he imparts life to your soul, to your spirit. And when you come and trust Jesus as your Savior, you get out of being dead and you become alive spiritually so you can walk with God, say, so you can walk with God. Now, uh, what if you don't want to do that? What if you say, preacher, I'm not interested to walk with God. I just want to walk with myself. I just want to walk with the world. I, I don't, I'm not interested in walking with God at all. I like being dead. Uh, you know, death doesn't really bother me that much. And, and I, I, I don't really mind being uh, dead uh, spiritually. Uh, you know, the, what really counts to me is being uh, not dead physically. And, and so, you know, I don't really care about walking with God. Now, what's the result of that? What's the result of staying dead? You know what the result is? Number one, you'll never be satisfied. Mm -mm. You will never be satisfied, my friend. You know why? Because you were created to walk with God. God made you to only be satisfied when you're walking with him. Say, you're never going to be satisfied in your entire life. You know, I could go down to a, a gas station down here and, uh, you know, uh, and say, uh, man, look at the price of that diesel fuel. I think I'll fill up my uh, truck with, uh, with water. Now, you think that that motor would be satisfied with water? No, my friend, it wouldn't be, would it? That engine was made to be satisfied with diesel fuel. And you're, you can even put gasoline there. It's not going to be satisfied. It takes diesel fuel to satisfy that engine. You were made to walk with God. And you're never going to be satisfied walking with yourself. You're never going to be satisfied walking with the world. You're not going to be satisfied. You're going to be only satisfied when you're walking with God. You know, we could take a fish out of the water. I like to go fishing. And, and uh, we could lay that uh, fish on the, on, the, on the ground. Do you think that uh, fish should be satisfied? No, he's flopping around, flipping around. Why? He wants to get back there in the water because that's where he's satisfied. Say. Hey. A fish was made uh, to be satisfied in the water, and you were made to walk with God, eh? And that's the reason why you're not satisfied. That's why some of you 
You, you know, you're just searching and grabbing at straws, and, and you're just living a life that's empty and uh, purposeless. Why? Because you're not satisfied. You're not uh, walking with God because you don't have the ability to walk with God. You've never been saved. Going to your church doesn't save you. Believing in the Bible doesn't save you. You know, a memorizing scripture doesn't save you. A singing souls in the church doesn't save you. That doesn't give you spiritual life. It's when you recognize you're dead and you need life. And Jesus is the only one who gives you. That's when you can get satisfied. And that's when you can start to walk with God. Have you ever seen yourself as a dead sinner? Totally incapable of uh, doing anything for God? Past, uh, the fact, the first good work you ever do after, is, is after you get saved. You'll never do a good work before God before you get saved. It's, it's, it's dead. It's all, it's all death. There's no good work. All the people, look at all the people wrapped up in religious uh, rituals, Lent and all the rest of it. I mean, they're going through all these, and, and you know, they think they're doing good. They're not doing good. Uh, the uh, Bible says, uh, you know, uh, uh, that there's none good. No, not one. So uh, you can't do anything good until you get saved because then you can have life to do good. See, you got to have life to do good. You can't do good when you're uh, dead. <laughs> I've never seen somebody doing something good that was dead. Have you? Physically? No, you don't see it. Same way spiritually. You can't do anything good for God until you are alive unto God. And that comes when you come to Jesus Christ and you receive him as your savior. Secondly, not only if you don't want to start a walk with God, you don't want to walk with God, you'll never be satisfied. But secondly, you'll never miss death. You'll never miss death at all. It's a point of man wants to die, but after this, the judgment, you're, you're dying. You know, uh, it's not too long. You're going to die. I, uh, now, folks, I'm not trying to uh, be morbid here, but it's a fact. You better face it. You don't know when you're going to die. None of us do. Oh, we think it's a long down, uh, way down the road. Oh, it may not be a long way down the road. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. You know, we don't know. See, we're going to die. But you can't miss death when you walk with God. When you walk with God, you can't miss death. Here in Genesis chapter 5, you'll find a phrase over and over again in that chapter, and he died, 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 and he died. And he died. And he died. Over and over again, that chapter, you find that phrase. And he died. Now, there's only one person in that chapter that that's never said about. Guess who? Enoch. See, Enoch started to walk with God. And Enoch one day was caught up. He never died. He was caught up alive. Said, that's a picture of the rapture of the Old Testament. You know that? And so when you start to walk with God and you come and get saved, you know what? You are going to be able to potentially miss death. I'm not looking for the undertaker, folks. I'm looking for the uppertaker. Amen? Amen. I mean, Jesus is going to come. He could come in any moment. And you know what? If you have started walking with God, you're out of here. You'll never have to die. Oh, I'll tell you something. You don't want to start with God? Then you're putting your arms around death and say, Death, I just love you. I can't wait till I die. I just really think the world of you, Death. You know, uh, I'll tell you what. If you want to uh, have victory uh, over death, you need to get saved and trust Christ as your Savior. Have you ever done that? See, a lot of people can't walk with God because they've never started a walk. They never have come to Christ and received Christ and gotten the life that they need to walk with God. Say, a lot of people are, are, are dead spirits in our churches. You know what I mean? That's why they don't want to uh, pray. They don't want to come to church. They don't want to. They'd rather sit at home watching TV. Uh, they, they'd rather go to the mall. They'd rather do all kinds of other stuff. Why? They're alive under that. You know, I go down here in the street corner, and I say, hey, you know, I got a $10 bill here. I used to have a $5 bill, but I, I moved it up to 10 because, <laughs> you know, $5 bill is like a $1 bill today, you know. And uh, I go to the street corner, and I can say, hey, there's free, this, this $10 bill is free. Anybody wants it? Anybody wants it can have it. How many takers do you think I get? You know, how many takers? Man, I'll tell you something. They'd be, they'd, be, uh, uh, they, they'd be right there, wouldn't they? They'd be right there. You know, it's free. Uh, you know, they say, well, it's free today. It's very popular. And, and, you know, they try to sell everything. Free. You get a free this if you buy this. You get a free that if you buy this. The word free is, is so popular today, except when it comes to salvation. <laughs> uh, we don't want a, a free gift in salvation. We want to work for it, you know, and, and so forth. But anyway, uh, I, I would get some takers, don't you think? I, I really would. But if I went down that street corner 
And I said, we're having revival meetings up at Maranatha uh, Baptist Church here at 7 o'clock. Uh, uh, would you like to go? How many tickets did I get? Well, you know. Very few, right? They don't. They don't want to. They don't want the things of God. They're dead to God. And we got a lot of Christians, you know, they're dead to witnessing. They're dead to tithing. They're dead to coming to church. They're dead to reading their Bible. They're just dead. They've never been born again and had real life breathed into their soul. Oh, dear friend, what's your relationship with walking with God? Is a relationship you can't do it because you've never really been saved. You never really have trusted Christ your Savior. Secondly, there's another relationship you could have to walk with God, and that is a relationship of being able to but not doing it. Oh, do we have a lot of people like this today? They're able to. Oh, they've come to Christ, and they've been saved, and they've received the Lord as their Savior, you know? And uh, they, they got spiritual life, but they don't want to walk with God. They don't do it. They don't do it. Uh, they, they, they want to, but they don't do it. They want to because when, when you get saved, God puts that in your heart to want to walk with God. I don't have to, if you're really saved, I don't have to uh, try to get, uh, stir up a want to walk with God in your life. It's there. It's there. If it's not there, you're not saved. If you don't want to walk with God, uh, dear friend, you've never been born again. I don't care if you've been a, uh, uh, say, uh, so member of this church for 50 years. You know, if you don't want to walk with God, you know, uh, then then uh, you've never never uh, started to walk with God, you know? There's a desire. People that are alive physically have a desire to live, right? They don't want to die. If you're alive, you don't have a desire to die. You'd rather not die, amen? Well, the same thing is true when you get born again. You have a desire to walk with God in your heart. It's there. If it's not there, you better check up in your salvation. <laughs> you better check up very, very closely on it. But these are people that uh, de- uh, they, they can, but they don't do it. They don't do it. One of the saddest illustrations in the Bible of a person like that was Lot. Lot in the Old Testament was a saved guy. He was born again. I'd wonder about that if I didn't have 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 and 7 to tell me that he was saved, you know? I mean, this guy, he uh, you know, lived in Sodom Gomorrah and let his girls uh, you know, go with unsaved guys and he wasn't involved in his kids' lives at all and and, um, you know, he was uh, pitching his tent towards the world in Sodom and Gomorrah. And, you know, he'd rather give his girls to some wicked uh, men who wanted to rape uh, the visitor who came. Uh, but he wouldn't let them do that. But he said, hey, my daughters. Can you imagine a dad offering his daughters to be raped? You know? But, you know, there are some dads who let their uh, daughters uh, run uh, half naked in the way they dress. And, and um, uh, you know, uh, uh, are, are saying, hey, come on ahead and rape my daughter. You know, I'm, I'm letting her uh, look like the world and dress uh, sensually and, and so forth. They're, they're, I, I, can't, I can't understand how some husbands let their wives dress the way they do. Man, I just can't understand it. Man, I tell you what, I thank God I had a wife that wanted to dress modestly. You know, she was, she was just a wonderful example. But anyway, uh, you know, the, 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 the lot, he, he, was, he was a man who didn't walk with God. And and they lost. You know, when you don't walk with God and you're saved and you're able, you're going to lose. You're going to lose big time. When you are able to walk with God and you don't do it, you're going to lose big time. Lot lost. Do you ever think about the things he lost? I tell you what, Lot Lot lost a a godly friend by the name of Abraham. He didn't want to hang around. You know, when you don't walk with God, you don't want to be around people who are. You get that conviction, right? You know, you don't want to hang around people that are living for God. You'd rather be with the worldly people. You know, a lot, he, he didn't want to be around him. He wanted to go into Sodom and Gomorrah. He wanted to be, that, that's where he wanted his friends in the world. He didn't want to be with Abraham, and he left Abraham. A great, godly man, he left him. He didn't want to hang around him. Why? Because he wasn't, uh, he, he wasn't walking with God. And he didn't walk with God. And he walked in the world. And he lost. Oh, did he lose big time. He lost a godly friend. You know, Abraham, number number two, he lost his wife. His wife never got saved because he didn't walk with God. You know, isn't it sad that there are husbands that don't walk with God and and, and no wonder their wives don't want to be saved. You know, if you want to see your loved one saved, you better walk with God, sir. You want to see your kids saved, you better walk with God, mom. Hmm? Uh, you, if you want to see a relative's frame, you can't walk in the world and, and see people get saved. 
You got to walk with God. And Abraham, he lost his wife. He lost all his children. I mean, he lost his kids. They went in the world. They married unsaved guys. And, and he just lost. All his life was, was losing. And you know what? Uh, when you get saved, you've got a life to live. And it's either going to be a life of losing or a life of winning. A life of winning or losing. And you know, I, I tell you, when you don't walk with God, you'll lose. You won't win. A lot didn't win. At the end of his life, he saw everything he lived for go and smoke. Everything he lived for, where all his heart was around stuff in Sodom and Gomorrah and the pleasures of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God sent a fire down and that, that whole city burned up. And can you imagine what it was like for Lot? As he looked and saw his house going up in flames. Probably had a lot of nice stuff in that house. Probably worked hard to get it. I'll tell you some stuff he really did enjoy about it. A lot of pleasures, you know. He saw it all go up. Have you ever seen a house going up, burning up? You know, just burning up? I remember I was up in Canada preaching one time, and there was a, I heard a fire, uh, fire uh, siren, and I walked out, and sure enough, I saw this smoke coming up from the house just across from where I was. And I, I walked over there, and I saw the, the parents, uh, the mom and dad, and they were out there just sobbing. But you know what? Lot, he had everything he lived for going smoke. You know what you know, can get you some people to judge the truth right? You know, go to heaven. Oh, well, thank you. Maybe rapture will have better. But boy, don't forget, you're going to go to the judge of truth right after this. Right after the rapture, you go to the judge of truth right? And your life will be translated into a pile of wood, hay, and stubble, or a, a pile of gold, silver, and precious stones. And the Lord's going to take a fire. And he's going to put a fire to the wood, hay, and stubble. And what's going to happen? It's all burned up. That's the way it's going to be with a lot of Christians who don't walk with God. They could. God has saved them. God has invested his son's uh, uh, soul and life blood in them. And God has invested the, them and he's given them the Holy Spirit. He's given them the word of God. They have no excuse for not walking with God. And yet they fail. And their whole life is a fire. And they can burn all over. They can be, here's our life away until after, after the, the, uh, the tribulation. Here's a, there's going to be a lot of Christians weeping over a wasted life because they didn't walk with God. They didn't walk with themselves or their wicked. They didn't walk with God. See, there are people uh, who uh, have the relationship of being able to walk with God, but they don't do it, just like Lot. They don't do it. Now, why is it that people don't walk with God? You know, why is it that people uh, who can walk with God don't do it? It's not because they don't have the grace to do it. You know, uh, Noah uh, received grace from the Lord, and he walked with God. You read it in uh, Genesis chapter 6. He, he got, see, to, to walk with God, you need God's grace, say. And you say, well, preacher, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I got God's grace, and I'm saved, but I, uh, pastor got a little more grace than I did when I got saved. That's why he, he's so, uh, you know, diligent walking with all. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you, got, uh, you got more grace, Brother Gilmore, than I got, but I just got a little bit of grace when I got saved. I mean, uh, Noah had a lot of grace. That's why he built that ark and walked with God, even though no one ever heard it raining and stuff. Uh, he, he got a lot more grace than I got. I got news for you, my friend. When you got saved, you got as much grace as Noah got. And when you got saved, you got as much grace as pastor, and you got as much grace as I. See, God doesn't give his grace, give it out. Say, well, I'm going to give this guy a little bit more than this guy. I'm going to give it a little bit more this lady than this lady over here. No, he gives you all the grace you need to walk with God. There is no excuse for not walking with God if you're saved. God has given you the grace to be able to do that. He's given you the ability you know, grace is not just uh, God's riches in Christ's expense. Uh, grace is a divine enablement. It's God enabling you to do what you couldn't do apart from his grace. Witness. Have the church ready to uh, serve the Lord. Apart from God's grace, you can't do those things. See, that's what we got. Say, but God gives you the grace uh, to be able to do those things. There's no excuse. You can do what God wants you to do. You know, it's not a matter of talent. It's not a matter of ability. It's not about a, a matter of intellect. It's just a matter of yielding. It's just a matter of saying, I'm going to be obedient and walk with God. Say, that's all it takes. 
Uh, God's giving you the grace. All right, what is the reason then uh, why people who can walk with God don't walk with God? You know why? Because uh, they are they are people who are, number one, filled with themselves. You know, you cannot walk with God when you're filled with yourself. It's just impossible. That's why Paul said, I die daily. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. See, to walk with God, you've got to say, I'm sick and tired of walking with myself. You know, my wife said, one day, she, 19 years old, she said, I'm sick and tired of living for myself. I'm sick and tired of doing what I want to do. I want to do what God wants me to do. And that, my friend, is the big reason why a lot of people who could walk with God don't is because they're filled with themselves. They think about themselves. They, 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 all their thoughts are about them. All their, uh, you know, it's, it's not about God they're thinking. They're thinking about themselves and how I look to people and, you know, how do I look and, and so forth. And, and, and they're never going to be able to walk with God because they're feel, you've got to come to the place where you're sick of walking with yourself. You're tired of walking with yourself. You want a new walk, a walk with God. Hey, isn't it wonderful that God would want to walk with me? You know, isn't it wonderful that the great God who created this whole world wants to walk with me? I want to walk with him. I mean, walk with, it's not just that uh, we need to walk with God, and, and, and we're the ones that are, are, are the big uh, uh, people involved here. Uh, no, we need to turn the table and think of it this way. God wants to. Jonathan had uh, this boy, uh, uh, Mephibosheth, and uh, David loved Mephibosheth. And so David said to, to uh, Zeb, the serpent, is there anybody related to, to uh, uh, Mephibosheth around? Did he, does he have the, or, uh, to uh, uh, Jonathan around? And, uh, and the servant said, yeah, there's a guy by the name of Mephibosheth. He lives down Lodibar, across the railroad tracks. And this great king of Israel wanted to go get Mephibosheth. He was lame. He was late. How do you tell him? He didn't care about that, did he? He said, hey, I want you to come walk with me now. And, and Mephibosheth got to learn from this guy and sit at the table of the king and feast of drinking that much food down there in Lodabar. You know, probably crackers and bread and water. But you and I have the privilege of walking with somebody God, I'm not going to do. Uh, you're, you're not going to get anybody else to walk. With. If you don't walk with God, no one's going to take your place. No one's going to take your place. You, uh, God's going to be without uh, being able to walk with you. Tell you, no one's going to take. And, and, and you know, God is really not pleased with that. He's not pleased when you don't want to walk with Him. When you don't want Him to walk with you, He's not pleased with that. You know, the Bible says Enoch pleased the Lord because he walked with God. Why did Enoch please the Lord? Because Enoch was someone that God could walk with. Therefore, he pleased God. Are you someone that God can walk with? Well, if you don't, you know, you're filled with yourself. How can God get in there and walk with you? When you're just filled with yourself, how can, how can he get in there and walk with you? There's a big wall between you and him. And he can hardly walk with you. Because you're so filled with yourself. Second reason why a lot of people don't walk with God, you know why it is? Who could? They could because they have the life. They've been saved. They've been born again. And that is because uh, the devil doesn't want you to walk with God daily. See, uh, the devil wants you to think you only walk with God on Sundays. You know, Sunday morning, I'll walk with God to Sunday school. Well, some Christians don't even do that anymore. Okay, I'll, I'll walk with God to morning service, you know. Uh, but I'm not going to walk with God Sunday night. You know, I'm not going to walk with God prayer meeting. I, I just, I just do it Sunday. You know, a lot of people think that walking with God is something you only do on.
on Sunday or Wednesday. No, my friend, walking with God, and this is what the devil doesn't want you ever, ever to realize. He doesn't want you ever, ever to think about this, but you're going to think about it tonight, I hope, anyway. Uh, at least you can have the opportunity to think about it. The devil doesn't want you to walk with See, walking with God is something, you know, you do daily. The devil doesn't want you daily to walk with him. Say, he doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to say, walking with God is just something I do on Wednesday. It's something I do on Sunday morning. And uh, some, of, some people even do it, want to do it Sunday night, you know. Uh, dear friend, that's not walking with God. I'm, I'm, I, I, I hate to pop your bubble. But that's not walking with God. Walking with God is something you do 24-7. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's what it is. It's walking with God every single day. Do you know uh, that uh, Malachi 3.16 says that God has a book of remembrance? Have you ever read that? Malachi 3.16? He has a book of remembrance. In that book, he records what you think about the Lord and what you say about the Lord. See, walking with God involves those two things. Thinking about him, bringing him into your thought life, and talking about him to other people, your wife, your kids, your friends, your fellow church members. Talking about the Lord. Did you think about the Lord today? Did you talk to someone about the Lord today? Your wife, your kids, your children, maybe somebody at work? And you didn't walk with God. If those things aren't working in your life today, you didn't walk with God today. You didn't walk with God today. Walking with God is bringing him into your thoughts and thinking about him. And bringing him into your mouth and talking about him. That's how you walk with God 24-7. You're constantly thinking about how great it is. I'm saved. How great heaven. Uh, thinking of God's great grace, his great mercy, his great uh, uh, forgiveness, his patience. You're, you're, you're thinking about him. And you're talking uh, to him. And you're talking to about him. You're talking to him, driving down the road, you're talking to the Lord. Uh, you're working in the, in, 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 doing dishes, you're, you're talking about him. There's, there's, you don't, can't talk and think about him. Take him in your mouth about him. See, we need to walk with God more. Folks, that's why our country is in desperate need of revival, because Christians aren't bringing God to their life daily. They're not thinking about him. They're not talking about him to their friends, their, to their relatives, to their children. Dads aren't talking to their kids about the Lord. Moms aren't talking to their kids about the Lord. See, walking with God is 24-7. You know, one time there was a, a, a preacher, and this preacher was uh, really a godly guy. And uh, the other preachers, uh, they just were, they just sensed the presence of the Lord with him. And um, they wondered, boy, they got to talk. Well, he wasn't there for a preacher's meeting. And, he, and so they were talking about this man, uh, these preachers were, and said, man, he's just got the power of God just seems to be on him. There's a, the presence of the Lord just seems to be with him. I, I bet he must spend hours in prayer. <laughs> and, and so one of them decided uh, you know, they all decided this that uh, uh, and agreed to it. One of them said, you know, I'm going to sneak in his room and get underneath the bed. And when he comes home, you know, I'm going to get underneath that bed. I'm going to see how much time he spent in prayer. And so he got underneath the bed of that preacher, you know, and he comes in. Preacher doesn't know he was under there, of course. And he comes in and, um, you know, he gets ready for bed. He hops in bed. The preacher does. This preacher with the power of God on him hops in bed. And you know what? There's no prayer. And this guy's underneath the bed. No prayer. And then he hears him say, Good night, Lord Jesus. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Lord Jesus. I'll see you in the morning. You see, my friend, he walked and talked with God all day long. And when it came to go to sleep, there was nothing more to say. Nothing more to say because he had walked with God and talked with God all day long. Dear friend, are you walking with God? You can. You're saved. You know the Lord. But I'll tell you something. Don't be like Lot. Don't be a loser. You will lose big time if you don't walk with God in your life. You're going to lose big time. And then how can you walk with God? What do you need to do? You need to meet and walk with him 24-7 daily. Not just Sunday, 
Now, just Wednesday, 24-7, talking about the Lord, thinking about him in your mind. See, walking with God starts in your heart, you get saved, and then it's got to get in your thought life. you got to start thinking about God, not just doing yourself. When you're feeling yourself, guess what? You think about yourself all the time. You're thinking about you. What do people think of me? What will they, you know? And you're thinking about you. Oh, listen. Are you in a relationship of uh, walking with God 24-7? Could you bring God more in your life daily? See, revival takes place when God's people say, you know, I'll tell you what, folks, that's why our country is going to pot. That's why it's going to hell in a handbasket. It's not a political problem. It's, it's a spiritual problem. It, it's a pro spiritual problem in this country. People who say they're saved, not walking with God. They could. They have the grace. They've been born again. They have the life. They've received life. But they just don't take the time to walk with God. And they don't take uh, and put their minds to it and their time to it. So daily. That's why people who can walk with God don't walk with God. They don't do it daily. And the devil will do everything he can to keep you from doing it daily, from walking with God daily. He doesn't want you to walk with God every day. Say. The third uh, relationship with walking with God, and, uh, and that is uh, you can have the relationship of walking with God now. In other words, you're saved, you're walking with God, you're saved, and you're walking with God now. You're bringing him into your life 24-7. You're thinking about him. You know, and, and you're walking with God now. Oh, uh, you know, the Bible is filled with people who walk with God. The Bible is really filled with uh, uh, people who walk with God. For instance, Enoch walked with God. We, that's who we're talking about here. Yeah, he had the testimony to please God. How did he please? What pleased God about? What did Enoch do to please God? He walked with him daily, just talked, walked with him. You know, doesn't say anything else that he went to church every day. He said, he just please, he walked with God every day. You know, uh, Noah walked with God. And the Bible says there in Genesis chapter 6, Noah was a just man. He was a just man. You know, Noah was not just, just with, with people. He was just before God. You may be just before people, but are you just before God? Are you right before God? Say, you can be right before men. And be a, a, people can say, man, that guy's a, he's an honest guy. But are you, are you honest before God? See, he wanted to be just before God. That's what really mattered to Enoch. He wanted to be right with God, nothing between him and the Lord. Say, he was a just man. Why was he a just man? He wanted to walk with God. That's why he wanted to be just. He wanted to be right because he walked with God. When you're walking with God, you want to be right with him. You don't want to sit between you and him. You want to be right with him. So Enoch, and then Noah. Uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, Noah, you know, uh, he was perfect in his generations. What does that mean? Does that mean he was absolutely perfect? Listen, walking with God is not perfection. Walking with God is not something that uh, you do and you never fall, you never fail, you never uh, do something that's uh, not right. No, you're a, a sinner and you're saved by grace. But you know something? You're not perfect and you're going to fall and you're going to falter and you have feelings in your life. But you see, a person who walk with God gets up and gets back to it. Noah got drunk. But he got up. He stopped walking with God. That's why he got drunk. You stop walking with God, you can get drunk. You stop walking with God, you can look at pornography. You stop walking with God, and you can lie and cheat and steal, do anything that the lost person does. Because you're still a sinner saved by grace. You got that old nature. And when you're not walking with God, you're not keeping the new nature. You're keeping the old nature. And pretty soon that old nature is going to come to a head. And it's going to explode. It's going to degrade its character and shape. Say. And so, uh, you know, but Noah, he got, he got up and he said, oh, Lord, I got to get back to you, God. And he got right with the Lord. And so he's perfect in his generations. What's that mean? He was whole. He was complete. He wasn't one thing at church and another thing at home. You know, uh, Noah was, was, was uh, sincere. 
He walked with God sincerely. When you walk with God sincerely, you're not one thing at church, another thing at work, one thing at home, another thing with your friends. You're sincere. Oh, how many things there are. Sincere Christians. People who are real, true. They're not one thing here, another thing there. They don't talk a certain way to someone and, and talk a whole different way to someone else. See, Noah walked with God, and he was perfect his generations. You know, you know what that means also? He walked according to truth. He believed the truth of the word of God. He believed what God said, that there's going to be a great judgment coming. There's going to be a great flood. Never been a flood. He believed what God said. See, when you walk with God, you believe his truth. You believe his Bible. I mean, you stake your whole life on it. You believe in creation. You don't believe in evolution. You don't even believe in theistic evolution. You believe in creation. Listen, you don't believe in climate change. You don't believe in that. That's, a, that's a, the newest form of rebellion against God. Climate change is. Evolution was the old way of rebelling. Now the new is climate change. We're in control of this world. We're in control of whatever. Now, granted, we need to be sensible. We need to take care of our earth. God has given us on uh, the earth to, to uh, you know, manicure, take care of it. But this idea that it's up to me as to whether or not this nation, this world's going to last. I want to tell you something. That is a, that's rebellion. That's rebellion against God. God's the one in control. And so anyway... What am I saying? I'm just saying this. Uh, when you are walking with God, you walk according to the truth of the Bible. What does the Bible say? And that's final and that's settled. Enoch, or Noah believed what the Bible said. There's a judgment coming. People laughed at him. He's out there building an ark. What are you doing out there, Noah? You're on the weekends working on this ark. You could be out there having fun, snowmobiling, skiing, and all the rest of it. What are you doing working on that ark? Oh, there's going to be a flood. Oh, Noah, come on. It's got, you got too much religion. By the way, you say there's too much religion, but you can't say too much Bible. You can never get too much Bible. That's the problem. We're not getting enough Bible in our life. Too much time in the computers, all the rest of the stuff that's out there to occupy our time. Not enough time in the Bible. And you know, we the key, he built that ark. Aren't you glad he did? Amen. You better be, because you wouldn't be here if he didn't. If he had not walked with God, he wouldn't. Thank God he and uh, Noah walk with God. Amen. Oh, you go through the Bible. David walked with God. How do you ever get the courage to go against Goliath? Nine foot two. How do you ever get the courage to do that? Saul, he's cowering. And over. He's not walking with God. Saul, King Saul. He should be. And David, this little guy, ruddy guy, skinny, you know, never been in a mini military fight. Doesn't know anything about fighting. He goes out there with a sling and a stone and he throws that stone and knocks over Goliath. David goes out there, gets his big old sword, chops his head off, and drags his head right into the tent of Saul. Where did David get that kind of courage? He walked with God. He walked with God. Job had all his family uh, die in one day, lost his health and everything else, everything he had, all his homes and all of his material, totally gone. But you know, in Job chapter 1, I don't have time to look at it, but Job chapter 1, you find that after that, Job worshipped the Lord. He didn't get bitter. He worshiped. He prayed. You know what worship means? It means he praised God. He praised the Lord after losing everything. Where did he get that? Ability. He walked with God. He walked with God. Oh, dear friend, you go through the Bible, and you find people who walk with God, and the reason why God blessed them, and the reason why God used them is not because they were intellects, not because they were talented, not because they were uh, rich, but you, God used them because of one thing. They walked with God. The number one thing God wants you to do and me to do is to walk with God. He has showed the old man what is good and what doth the Lord require to do justly and to live honest, uh, to, to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Humble walking. Humble. Hum, humble people. Humble people are people who walk with God. Proud people are people who don't walk with God. That's why they're proud. You can't be proud and walk with God. Can't do it. It's impossible. God hates pride. 
It's when Satan got the whole world to mess over. I will be like the most high. I, I, I. And the whole world is rocking back and forth because of pride. And so anyway, the last thing I want you to know about this relationship of walking God. Have you gotten the, the relationship you can't have? You can have a relationship of, of not being able to because you're not saved. You can have the relationship of being able to, but you don't do it. You don't do it. You can have the relationship of walking with God now. You are walking with him. You are, uh, you know, living for him and, and in the word and, and walking uh, to please him. And uh, the last relationship is a relationship of seeing that it's time to walk with God. Realizing that it's time to walk with God. Don't you see it's time to walk with God, Christian? Don't you see? Don't you see that? Don't you realize it's time to walk with God? And Lord's coming. I mean, this world's a mess. I mean, in Christianity, we need revival. It's time for God's people to realize that they need to walk with God more. I'm not saying you don't walk with God. I'm not saying that this is a church full of people right tonight and not walk with God. We need to walk with God more. We need to see that we need to walk with God more. Take steps to do to walk with God more. That's what we need to realize. You know, that's what Enoch realized. He, he, he realized he needed to walk with God more. And um, he needed to walk with God. And, and, and in Jude chapter, uh, well, there's only one chapter in Jude, but verse 14, 15, Enoch also, the son of Adam, prophesied these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon them, upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they, uh, they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And Enoch, he walked with God 300 years. Think of that. He didn't take a step for God. He walked with God. He just kept on taking steps. Just kept on for 300 years. He didn't walk with God, and then all of a sudden he said, man, I'm tired. I, I think I'll just sit back and do nothing. Nobody else wants to walk with him. I, I, I'm tired. Of he didn't do that. He was 300 years. This man walked daily with God. You know one thing? I hope I don't have to stand before up behind him at the judgment seat. Somebody's going to have to weigh his deeds. And God shows this man. Somebody's got to be behind him. You know what caused Enoch to walk with God daily for 300 years? You know two things. Number one, he became a father. Methuselah came to the world. And there's something about children that all of a sudden wake up and dad's not walk with God and say, man, I got to walk with God. I got a, I got a little boy that's, I got a daughter now. A mom wake up and say, man, I got a, I got a daughter that's going to follow my footsteps. I got to walk with God. And he woke up. Enoch woke up. Methuselah was born. He said, man, I got to get going. I'll never forget when my first boy was born. Oh, man. I remember that so well. And I remember we brought him home. And we had this old couch that someone had given. We got married, we didn't have much. We had all of our stuff was in the back end of a pickup truck when we came down to Iowa to start a ministry. And so we didn't have any furniture. And so the people in the church were very kind. The stuff that they were to give the goodwill, they gave it up. And so they gave us the old couch. And that couch was really good, went like this. And so we put a blanket over it so people come to visit. If we'd have people at our house, we didn't want to think we're <laughs> really hard up. We don't even, can't even afford a couch that's, you know, easy to sit on. And so I brought my wife home and I brought my son home. And I laid him on the couch. I took out all the rubber holes. And we sat right down in front of those holes. I said, honey, it's getting smothered down here. Let's get him out of there. And then we got him out. And I said, now, you know, I'm not going to do that. I got to show you how much I love you. I got to show you how much I love you. I got to show you how much I love you. I got to walk with you like I've never walked with you before. Can't you see, my friend, it's time to walk with God more than you've been walking with him. Can't you look out and see the handwriting on the wall and see 
that it's time for you to walk with God more than you've been walking with him. I love this song. Just a closer walk with me. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Let's all stand together. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, please. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. No one's looking around, please. Our pianist, I don't, yeah, there she is. And we're going to sing that same chorus, 168. Uh, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon me. You know, that's what you need, friend, to walk with God. You need the Spirit of God to fall on you. You need the Spirit of God to fall on you. To walk with God more. And so if God spoke into your heart tonight about walking with him more than you're walking with him, you know, most of you are walking with him. I think that all of you in this building would profess salvation. So you can walk with God. You've got the life to you got the desire to. Now, but you don't have the desire. Well, you need to get saved then. And uh, maybe sin has taken away that desire. Same thing you want. Take away that desire. And I wonder tonight if God's speaking to your heart about walking with God more. You know what that would mean for some of you? It means you have to come and deal with some sin that's keeping you from walking with him. But if God's speaking to your heart tonight, maybe, as far as you know, there's nothing between you and the Lord. Nothing. As far as you know. Nothing between you and anybody else. Can't walk with God and be wrong with people. It's impossible. And you say, Fritz, here, there's nothing, as far as I know, between me and the Lord, there's nothing between me and anybody else. But then, dear friend, here is the issue. Would you come tonight and get on your knees down here and say, God... I need to walk with you more. Would you please help me? I'm weak, Lord, but I want to walk with you more than I've been walking with you. If God is dealing with you about that, our pianist is playing that song, would you slip out from where you're standing right here? Come down. There's a chair here. You can come sit if you can't kneel. You can just come. Come stand. Say, God, give me a greater desire to walk with you. Would you be willing to do that tonight? Just come right now. Amen. Amen. Lord, I need to walk with you more. I know it. Would you give me a greater desire to walk with you? Would you renew my desire? I need to walk with you. I need a closer walk with you that I've been having. Would you slip out and come right now? Anybody else quickly? Anybody else quickly? All right, we're going to sing that great song. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon me. Would you sing that song right now? It's number 168 if you need the hymn book. 168 if you need the hymn book. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Pastor. There are so many reasons why that needs to happen, that closer walk with God. Number one, just for your own sake. God wants you to know him. Eternal life, according to John 17, is knowing God. Okay, so we get a chance to start heaven on earth early because we know him and you can know him more. 
There are so many opportunities to serve God now. God has a huge army, but only so many are combat ready. And that's to our shame. We need more people ready for battle. Okay? Because he's opening up so many doors. None of us know how long these doors are going to open. One move at the superintendent level, one move at the mayoral level, one move on and on, and all of a sudden all these doors that are now open don't necessarily close because God can do anything, but it gets a whole lot tougher. If we are having trouble finding Christians doing work when it's free, how are we going to find them when it's going to start costing something? We need that closer walk with him. And we, for your own sake, and then God will take you when you're ready and he'll put you out in that world because he wants your light to shine. He want, this, if this world's dark, it's because the Christians have hid themselves under bushel baskets. Okay? We need to get out there and we need to shine for Jesus Christ. And there's no reason not to. No reason whatsoever. Someone was sharing me the other day down on the corner of uh, 250 and 77 or 71, there was a sign for a mystic conference up in the Cleveland area. Witchcraft. They weren't afraid to come down to Ashland, Ohio and put a witchcraft seminar happening at this large convention center here. They, we didn't frighten them. Okay? That's the stuff going on. And we need to be ready to serve our Lord in any capacity. Thank you so much, Brother Gary Gilmore, for being here. And we need to be doers, not just hearers of everything we've heard. Right? It's pointless just to hear. You've got to be a doer. Lord, thank you so much for your goodness unto us, for using your word to speak to us. Lord, we don't want to be just hearers. We want to be doers. You have been so gracious to Ashland County. Lord, the multitude of ways, the doors that are open, from the youngest to the oldest, we have an opportunity to shine. And most importantly, Lord, we have an opportunity with no persecution whatsoever to know you to the greatest degree possible. There is n absolutely not one thing standing between us and you in this county. Lord, if we're not close to you, it's because we have chosen not to be there. Lord, help us to cede the privilege. We pray in your son's name. Amen.